Meow. What's up? What's up? Nope. Didn't like it, huh? What's up? Hi. Hey. Come here. are privately owned so you can't go in none of them security on duty whatever
Can't go in map. Oh. These granite ruins here is called Mazes Point. And because uh, there was a man here named Mays originally, and then the building was built in 1868, and it had several businesses in it. A saloon, a post office, general merchandise stores, a drug store, which was back in 1872. In 1873, the championship hall was built over the stone arches here, and meetings were held upstairs. The stairway that goes to nowhere outside was what led up to the great hall. And in 1940, they tore this apart there for salvage. <laughs> and the vaults in the back, they stored county records in. Now back in 1889, Missouri M. Getchell came to Silver City and built this drugstore and post office for his uncle. And, um, and then in 1965, he helped his uncle with the Idaho Hotel, which is around the corner. And at times, this building is still open as a shop and a museum. Property back in here, we're not gonna go there. The main part of town is behind me, but I'm gonna walk up here a little bit. No part of the building back here. In March of 1866, William F. Sommerkamp and his partner Thomas Bray built a saloon and a brewery here. The saloon was below the level of the street and the brewery opened here on the street. And uh, the section off to the side became known as Dead Man's Alley. The lower part of this building has a spring running right through the inside of the building, which was used in the brewery. It was last used as a furniture and vegetable stand. These granite ruins are from a building that was built in 1866 by T.J. Butler, and he had general merchandise in it, and uh, this building burned down in 1939. A fellow named S.N. Moe, he was born in Norway in 1859. He came to Silver City and opened this jewelry store in 1880. He had a fine stock of watches, jewelry of all kinds, silverware, optical wares, etc. His living quarters were in the back part of the building. And is out on the hill, which I thought was the mayor's house, but I'm not certain. Gonna... This must 
to be the campground. I hadn't really noticed I got the barber shop there beside the meat market. And we're back down to Dead Man Alley. Mining our cars, head brain. Seems gold in there. Nope. Yeah, I did figure out the stairway to nowhere it goes to this bank that burned down. I, just, I think those are the vaults back here in the back. Oh, it says keep out. Alright. Anyway. About to head right down Main Street. Want to walk on the boardwalk? This looks like the vault for a bank that was here. That looks like the vault to... This place is open, they must go in. Place open. Hi. You guys got like? A, are you guys open? It depends on what you want. Like a coffee? Yeah, I can get you a coffee. I seen something about on a YouTube channel, some coffee and cookies or something. You, you have I don't any? have any cookies. Oh, okay, I'll take coffee oh, though. I got coffee. Two, two of them. Two coffees. 
I'm getting you a copy. She takes the uh, cream and I, I take cream and sugar. Got Mr. Grant on the wall. See, see my hat. Oh, I, well, I served on the Ulysses S. Grant. The, ah. the, you, got him, you got him on the wall right there. That was the that was the name of my submarine, the Ulysses okay. S. The Ulysses S. Grant. This is the Nugent House. It was built in 1876 by local businessman Benjamin W. Abbott. Uh, but back in 1916, it was lived in by Senator Edward Nugent, which is why it's now called the Nugent House. There, they got some solar, a little bit of solar in the roof. I'll pick up what I think is the outhouse. Look at that. That's the tallest outhouse I've ever seen. And this house at this edge of town is private property. They do got the old, uh, 
fire truck. Silver City Fire and Rescue. And we'll walk over here toward this church. These people use these like vacations. See how new the chimney is? And then they probably just open all these windows. They're all on hinges. They probably, it's a vacation spot. And they come up here. Looking at the back of the old hotel we were in a while ago. It's um, bigger than I thought it would be. Public toilets. The schoolhouse and the church. Oh my gosh. All right, let's do this. Which side is this thing supposed to walk up? This church was begun in 1896 by the at the Coscopal Church and completed in 1898 at a cost of $2,200. With the furnishings, it cost over $3,000. The money was raised by the Escoposcopal Guild and uh, means of card parties and bazaars and uh, selling cakes and stuff. And um, 17 windows in the main part of the church were cathedral glass and came from Chicago. The beautiful windows above the altar were leaded grass, were leaded glass, but were broken by vandals and had to be replaced with newer glass. Services are still held when convenient.
Ja så er det så er der andre bog, hvor jeg kan These are all private residences anyway. This uh, schoolhouse, it was built in 1892, and it had all three grades in it, which was the elementary, the intermediate, and high school. That's what they had, three grades. And they had three school teachers, one for each grade. And they were paid for by tax revenue from all the saloons in town. And they had so much money for the school from the saloons paying their taxes that they were able to hire the best teachers. And um, however, they didn't tend to keep teachers very long because the town was so full of so many rich gold-bearing bachelors. So they had, had to keep hiring teachers. I <laughs> can't see nothing. Empty room. And um, but now it's uh, the uh, Owyhee Cattlemen's Association still holds its annual meetings downstairs, and the second floor is a museum displaying many implements of a bygone era. And this building here was originally built to be a planing mill, which turned out finishing boards for homes and other buildings here in town. There was a social room on the second floor, which was used by Masons in 1868. The building was purchased from Tom Jones, who owned the mill, and in the middle of the 1870s, the Masonic Lodge remodeled it. And in 1892, the title was acquired by Silver City Lodge number 13 in 1946 and this is still their annual meeting place Dally Barn This must be the meal the creek runs under it
So this building right here is one of the oldest that's still standing in Silver City. In the early days, on the side of the house next to First Street was the assayer's office for the people that have their gold check. And then on the other side of the building next to the creek was a Chinese laundry. The creek ran under the house and there was a trap door in the floor so the laundry man could draw up water for washing the clothes. <laughs> and at uh, various times in later years, the building was used as a gambling hall and under the name of the Strobe, Strode Club, boarding house, rooming house, a saloon, and a cafe before now becoming somebody's private residence. Hi there, boy. What are you doing?
get it down here. We took a wrong turn. Um, I'm just going the way the navigator says. I don't know where the hell I'm going, but there's a mine up here. You can see all the tailings, and there's a, maybe a miner's house here. And there was something here. We're still on our way out from Silver City, but we didn't come in this way, and we're not sure what we did wrong. Navigator says we can go this way, so I'm going this way. The other mile, the other road was 18 miles. I don't know how long this one is. There's another little cabin. Deer. Ooh, look at that. See that? I think I, I think I got him. Well, okay. 